Well, I'm going to go ahead and get us started, and Joe will actually conduct most of the interview until we get to some of the career opportunities. Um, before we get started, just because you guys are from all over the place, I will tell you that we have a bishop, a person who went to the master's in psychology program, and he is now a bishop in Kenya, for those of you who are international. Um, I have right in Kentucky a gentleman who is, is young but retiring from FedEx after many years, and he is studying to be a hospital chaplain. I have a young woman who you actually can see her picture on the MSP um, when you log on, and she manages the Lord's Center, L-O-U-R-D-E-S. And Jerome Placido is also someone that went to IT and leadership, not really sure what he was going to do, the master's in psychology, and it has taken him to a tremendous leadership role in IT, and he's out in California. So yes, we have people from all over. So Joe's about to bring up some slides and start you on a historic uh, journey with Divine Mercy University and get your questions answered, and we will go forward. Okay, I hope everybody can see the slide, and uh, the, it's the Master of Psychology. 100% online, no GRE, which is the graduate uh, record exam. It's a test you have to take in a lot of uh, graduate programs. And what we're going to talk about today, it will tell you a little bit more about Divine Mercy. The program itself, Master's of Psychology, our faculty, acceptance requirements, next steps, and scholarships. And Divine Mercy we were originally named the Institute for Psychological Sciences in the, the School of Counseling, and we were formed in 1999. So we're really, we're a pretty young university. And then we started the online, 100% uh, online psychology program in 2014. And then 2015, we changed our name to Divine Mercy. And uh, we are accredited. Accreditation is very important. We are accredited by the Southern Association of Colleges and Schools. And this usually takes your colleges, I mean, in the, uh, the Southern region, such as Florida State to Duke, North Carolina and Kentucky, and we're chartered in Virginia. How is our online masters in psychology different than other degrees? Well. We have distributed learning. It's a synchronous, meaning that uh, you don't have to be online uh, at a certain time because everything's archived and you do it on your own time, whether you know if you're an early morning person or a late night person. You know, you do the work, you know, when you have that time to do that. And our instructors are great. They're all PhDs and they understand what you need to learn meaning that, um, you know, whatever your goal is, they're going to try to, uh, you know, custom, customize your research towards that. And what you learn is directly related to what you use in your chosen field. And then we use the unique, and I'm saying unique, ca Christian Catholic meta model of the human person. So this is not a secular program. You know, we deal with the whole person, mind, body, and spirit. And we do this through for psychology, philosophy, and theology. Now, we don't have religion classes per se, but we do infuse theology into our teachings. And these are some of the different benefits that you can get if you get your degree in psychology. And I'll let you look at those. And sums up to analyzing, synthesizing, you know, putting things together, appraising, you know, that's an evaluation, then evalu evaluating your own biases too. Then more benefits. Yeah, when I see a chat, we do like to stop. And if you have questions, please do that. Um, some of you have taken similar courses and everybody looks at their master's degree in psychology for different reasons. But the way, as Joe says, it's infused, it really helps you in what arena you decide to go into. That's right. So but those are more benefits. Then, then you also have some advanced skills, you know, the ability to recognize uh, mental health challenges, negotiating, you know, interpersonal relationships, ways to lead a team, 
we don't do that much managing a budget, but you know, strategies for program evaluation to where, you know, like a, a step one, two, three, four on how to do it, and fostering increased cultural awareness. And we have five concentrations in our program. And they are marriage and family, human services, leadership, pre-PhD, and self-design. And I'll go into those it more in a little bit, but it is all online. The there you don't have to travel to Sterling, Virginia, which is northwest of Washington, D.C. We do have a, a, a what we call a virtual residency about at the halfway through your first semester and that's when everybody gets together for two days and now this is not a licensure track to become a mental health clinician okay. we we call ourselves counselors in faith but you, these skills whatever you're doing will help you a lot matthew i'm going to stop and answer your question yes um the industrial psychology is covered and can, you'll see as you look at course descriptions which Joe usually sends you a copy of that after the webinar because it really helps you get through anything in the industrial, the management, and all those areas. So good question. Any other questions that came up? Okay, good. So what you see here, these are our eight core courses. Everybody has to take these, you know, regardless of their concentration. And we use, you know, helping people flourish in a Catholic Christian approach to psychology. And, you know, flourishing is, you know, growing, you know, how to help people grow and do better in what they're doing. And when people uh, are, are, are doing better, they feel better. And it also helps the, uh, the person helping them to grow. You know, hum, human growth and development, that is, you know, studying tendencies from when people are at different points in life from maybe three years old to you know 70 years old you know there's a different approach cognition emotion and motivation our catholic christian vision of flourishing statistical analysis you know making some metrics to you know to help to see if you're making progress social psychology groups and then research methodology and in order to graduate, you have to do a capstone paper. And a capstone paper is done by your research and it's something you want to prove. And it's a you know crucial part of what we do. And but we start talking about capstone, you know, day one of classes, because that's important, because that's going to be your map to going forward. But these are the different in marriage and family. Below, these are their electives that make it a concentration marriage and family, human sexuality, flourishing relationship, marriage and family. And then in human services, the same eight core courses. Then their electives are relationship and intervention skills, personality, individual differences, and intelligence, and group counseling, group work. Then leadership, you know, transformational leadership, leading people, and applied leadership skills. Then we have a pre-PhD. We have uh, quite a few students who look, I, I want to get my master's in psychology so I can later get my PhD. And instead of doing electives, we do six courses, one credit hour courses on thesis writing. So to help you write a thesis. And then self-design, which is the most popular, same eight core courses that will do you a world of good, but then you pick one out of each of these, out of the marriage and family, uh, human services, and leadership. I want to interject that we didn't always have those concentrations, and I was the master's in psychology representative for a long time. I tried to retire, and Father Charles said, no, no, stay and form the Alumni Association. But one of the things I kept hearing from when I would interview folks like yourself for the uh, master's program, could we have some electives if I wanted to go in a specific direction? So the point I'm making is we did this because we listened to the folks out there to help their career options. So just want you all to know that. 
And the next slide is, you know, Michelle is alumni, but she was also a very successful career services director, you know, helping graduates and students find employment in their field after they graduate. And I'm gonna let her um, talk about these. Thank you, my dear husband. So I will tell you all again that another big surprise in forming the Alumni Association was finding how many job leads we get for people who are looking for people who have that, not just studying the science of psychology, but actually studying the whole person. And, you know, we have a troubled world these days, and a lot of individuals get into the Masters of Psychology for so many different reasons, whether they're working in a diocese or they're working in education. Priests will tell us and deacons will tell us we didn't learn how to handle the situations that are going on in the world these days. And then there's your industrial that you ask about. So some people come into the program, they know exactly what they want to do. Um, I'm a teacher. And if I get a master's, I'm going to have more education and I'm going to get a raise. Some individuals like Joe and I that retire too early and they say, you know what? I got plenty of years left. The old 401k is not doing as well as I wish it was. So I'm going to come back and go into the work field. And all of you can look at these different, and we're going to show you some more as well, but I'm sure a couple of them jump out at you. So like, for instance, when we break it down more in healthcare and mental health, um, applied behavioral analysis, again, this is not a licensure, but the people that come out of this program, I have a graduate in Ireland that works for the Catholic radio station there. We talked the other day. And she says, we need more in Ireland. And I said, we do. And she says, and the exchange rate is a lot better than it used to be. And that's one of the reasons we go up and down in international. So if you're all about healthcare, and I was in healthcare for many years, look at all the different roles that are available there. And then also in, uh, in, in industry. Humans, yeah, business, you know, all those different ones that jump out at you, whether you even are in one of those programs, and you know that in order to get promoted, you need more of that information. Sales involves obviously psychology, project managers, people who are out there in public relations. People want people who are going to grow their company and get along well with all the people that work there, let's face it. And then in uh, being a community college instructor. And as I mentioned earlier, a lot of people are involved with our diocese, with youth ministry, with teaching in the schools, uh, marriage, and uh, a lot of times they're doing uh, retreats for husbands and wives. And so it's just what they want to do, um, either for a living or in addition to what they already do as a living, for a living. And then in child and family services, much needed. Yes, because again, we're working with children and families that are facing things like what happened in COVID, loss of their jobs, downsizing, uh, needing assistance um, in those child and family, uh, foster homes. So these are the jobs that once you have the opportunity to take the master's in psychology, you're going to see a tremendous amount of skills. I call it a toolbox, if you will. And um, they're used very exciting. High crystalline. And yes, losing children. Um, how do you counsel someone when you haven't walked and, or at least let them listen to you? You know, somebody once asked an instructor when I was in the MSP admissions, what's the difference in being a counselor and getting your master's in psychology? She did not hesitate. And she said, if a people has have a desire and are drawn to counseling, it's because they want to fix people that are really broken. They're working with broken people. However, the master's in psychology gives you those tools to help people not get broken and be able to assist them through that turmoil. And if they need to be referred to a counselor, you can do that. So that's why we see a lot of people in um, drug and alcohol areas, parole officers, program manager, social services. So again, whatever you're called to do, in many, many instances, you're given those skill sets to do that. Okay. And then, uh, and then uh, let's Father Charles. He is the president of the university and uh, 
uh, a wonderful person, has great vision, and we will be improving, improving, improving. I mean, we're great now, but we're improving. But anyway, you know, jobs in ministry, you know, leaders of churches, individual directing, and uh, directors of pro-life ministries. Now, I, I don't know if you have had online learning before, if it was a while ago or recently, you know, the platform or the vehicle we use for it, it, it gets better and better and better. But it is the same atmosphere as full student participation and teachers. And fast turnaround with any of your professors and peers, because, you know, we, we give the students the ability to Zoom. So, you know, when they want to meet with their instructor, you know, you don't have to drive to Sterling, Virginia, you do a Zoom interview and you, and you do face to face. I want to answer that one question about the AP, uh, the applied behavior analysis. Yes, in fact, um, Joe's going to send you a list of the um, curriculum descri descriptions today after the call. And I think you'll find that is included in there. So okay. I'd like to stop and answer questions while they're being asked, so. Are there any more questions at this point? Um, Crystal Lynn asks, does the Diocese or Office of Victims help people all over the world? Indeed. Um, there's a couple of things that have happened and, and a couple of them are sad stories. I've actually had a priest that came from Nigeria and he was in Chicago about three courses into his training with the masters in psychology because they need so much help in international areas. And because of COVID and because the, unfortunately that was a small church and they weren't getting, he went back, his name's Father Valentine. And we're gonna bring Father Valentine back <laughs> one of these days. But that's one of the joys of being an international student, whether it's Canada or Ireland, you know, you get breaks, you know, summer breaks, winter breaks, and you're looking at about 15 hours a week that you have to dedicate to it. But the exciting thing is, is you, like Joe said in the early opening statement, you can work in the mornings, the evenings, the afternoon, and do your chats, do all the things that you do, write your papers, and they're not long papers. And it's exciting because, you know, eight weeks at a time, you're finishing a course. And is there anybody, and you can put it in the chat, is there anybody on the call that's afraid of um, online? Because we we teach it in a way that people get, um, yeah, like self-help, very, very good. But yes, absolutely. Um, we teach it so that people become very, very, you know, long orientation to start with Canvas, um, which is this slide that Joe will tell you about. Um, we have a 24-hour access to getting assistance. And so you really feel like you're in class with people. And when you get to graduation a couple of years later, you hug these people because you know them. You have shared amazing things. And Alicia said she did, in fact, uh, finish her bachelor's online. The average uh, Gilbert is anywhere from 25 to 29. Um, it's, it's really workable because a lot of times you'll be sending out um, a post and you'll post with other people and that's how you really get to know one another. And so it's um, it's just full of joy from the standpoint that you don't think you can get people, get to know people that well online, but you do. Okay. It's the new way of learning. I yep. Mean, and COVID, you know, I don't like it, but it really kicked it off to, to a higher level. And, you know, our uh, instructors do three, they do about three lectures per class. And, you don't have to be there live and we archive them. So you can watch your lectures one, two, three, four times as many as you need to, or you can download them to audiobook and listen to them in your car. And we use Canvas as our platform. It's simply the best. It's the best. It is so student friendly. It's great. Anyway. Um, I want to answer Chantel, who's in the military. <laughs> um, we are a VA approved school if you haven't used up in your, your benefits, but I will tell you that I have a couple of stories. I'll get your email from Joe of military folks and how it amazingly upended their career with opportunities. Um, the time management absolutely is something, and I always do it as this example. 
if it's going to take around an average of 15 hours a week, yeah, sometimes you're going to have to give up something. If your wife is managing the kids or whatever, you have to say, I've got a test. I got to study a little bit. And you do have to have that support. You have to have a cheerleader. But I think what happens is you find your stride. I've graduated many, many students from this program. And they said, you were right. You know, once I hit my stride, it was like a racehorse, you know, and I was able to, um, you know, get tutoring or uh, talk to someone else who was struggling. And that's what's unique about, it's like Joe just told the story the other day, and I forgot all about it, that when COVID happened, other institutions of higher learning actually turned to us because we do online so well and we do it and we do it you know, for a long time. And I have one here that says, I found my cradle role mother and I love her support. And that's the thing. I mean, this is a group of people who are believers and they want up their helpers. This is very much a helping degree. And, and it's not for everybody, but boy, when you hit your stride, it's amazing what you learn and you become a better wife, mother, teacher, priest, nun, and you start using what you're learning right away. And that's very unusual. You know, I have, this is the reason Joe came back. I have a lot of passion for this. All right, I'll hush. Okay, all right. So anyway, it's uh, easy to use and it's 24 seven. Then these are some of our instructors, uh, the, but the most important one is the head one, Dr. Julia Clausley. She's just very good and very aware of, you know, what's going on. And we have other uh, teachers that teach part-time. These are most are full-time. Uh, Trepto, Pecoraro, and Christopher Gross. And that um, they're, they're just very good in helping you and helping you, well, helping the program tailor make it to what your goals are. And uh, now we have two tracks. We have, you can get your, master's degree in 16 months or 26 months and the biggest difference is, is in 26 months you take one class per term in 16 months you take two classes per terms and uh, you know, when I was in school I took six classes per term so to me that I mean that's nothing and uh, but our acceptance requirements are a baccalaureate degree from an accredited institution with a 2.5 or better grade average, two letters of recommendations from maybe your spiritual director, you know, a former boss, teacher, or whatever that can say good things. They are, uh, we, you know, we email them to, to them. It's not a real big uh, thing for them to do. It's, you know, they answer questions about you. And then, you know, a short little essay in your resume, which is, uh, you know, your employment, other significant volunteer experience. And then a written statement of intent, which is uh, very important because it says, you know, here I am now, here is where I want to go, and this is how this master's degree in psychology is going to help me get to my end goal. And a TOEFL for, uh, you know, some students that English is not their first language. And then we do have financial aid for those who qualify, you know, in the form of loans. Some students have, uh, you know, tuition reimbursement from their companies. You know, we have, you know, it's VA approved. And then scholarships and grants. And, you know, scholarships, we have a lot of them. And right now we have, it's an early application scholarship. And I think it, it goes to, what, maybe the beginning of next week. And it, if you get your application in early, you know, they take off $1,500. And then other scholarships that you may be eligible for. And uh, that is our tuition, 826 a credit hour for 33 credit hours for 27258, 550 in technology fees and 27808. And this includes your books and books today are expensive. So we bundle them in there. And that is the, the total investment, you know, without any, um, uh, you know, type of scholarships. And we do have a $55 application fee that, you know, we can waive this. So there were a couple of um, other questions that I, I said I would answer here in just a moment. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a good statement that Crystal's making. You, Some of you may be with companies that 
provide tuition reimbursement, it's getting tougher and tougher. So that's why we do that $1,500 extra early application scholarship. And then you can write essays to have additional scholarships. And then you work with financial aid. You actually work with financial aid even before you would be accepted because we want that comfort level to be there. And they'll explain how all of that works. So it's a process in getting there. Um, I want to see what that was that other question. Yeah, I answered for Brandon. He wanted to know if the GPA requirement counted graduate GPA or just undergraduate, actually both. And then Mike wanted to know from a standpoint of what areas of counseling could you go into? Again, we have to be very above board that this particular program is not for licensure. If you want to be a counselor, you would be looking at uh, it being what we call hybrid. It's not 100% online. Uh, you do have to actually make visits to the campus three times over the two and a half years that it uh, takes to finish it. It's substantially more than the um, tuition wise. And you do then have to do, usually you, it's hard to do your job. You're actually doing your hours for getting the counseling um, masters. And so it's very much, I think, almost a calling. If you want counseling, you know you want counseling. And after this, if you decide that you do, we can put you together with the other representative. It does take a, um, a higher GPA as well. So I hope that answers it. Um, okay. Um, one of the things I'll tell you, Colin, on your question, right now we're taking applications for May. I, I, you know, you never know if for the fall, they're going to do that same thing as far as um, the early application. I would really, if I were you, I would look at my heart, look at my situation and think, what's going to change in my life if I wait? And I understand that that does happen. But um, sometimes they have an early application at the next class and sometimes not. It's just according to what's going on. We're a nonprofit. We work very hard to make it affordable for everybody. But um, I hope that answers it. And you all just keep, you know, sending the questions or the chats if your question's not answered. And Colin, yes, most people do work to attend. Um, I have been amazed at how many women have five children and they finish this. Some of them have been widows. I've been amazed at single parents. I've been amazed at priests who handle three parishes because of not enough priests. So I think that almost everybody works and they take that into um, consideration when you go through your financial aid appointment, just to see, you know, when you fill out your FAFs for where you are on income. And I always say, if you really want it, <laughs> where there's a will, there's a way. So, um, and your degree is accepted in uh, Canada. What, I don't, what part of Canada are you in? I have several graduates in different areas. Um, and I can actually put you in touch with one if, you know, and again, you may know what you want to, okay, the government covers it anyway, that's great, but I would like to find a job or a career. Well, and I think the thing that's exciting about, you know, this, um, okay, you're from Ontario, exactly. Um, Crystal's asking uh, that she's on disability and the government pays it. But yes, you know, the nice thing about two years and all these different people that you're going to meet and working with me if you want to get out of the government after they pay for your tuition with that experience, I'm quite sure that we can work with you with cover letters and resumes to help you find that dream opportunity that you're qualified for. Sometimes I tell, tell people to go on Indeed or go on different job hunts and you'll be very surprised to see what kind of jobs are available with a master's in psychology. It's that next level up. So many good questions. Okay, so anyway, you know, I, I know we, we're, we're just about finished, and we've given you a lot of information, and, you know, I know you have to sort it out. However, you have to ask yourself, is the master's in psychology the right path for you? And, you know, question number one is, you know, will the completion of the program help you attain your goals? And like Michelle said, you know, whatever your goals are, you know, check indeed, or you're with your company. If I get a you know master's degree, what can this you know do for me? 
and will the scheduling requirements for successful completion, are they workable? Well, like I said, you know, if you're doing 15 to 22 hours a week, yeah. you know, something's got to give, something, whether it's TV, tennis, bowling, or whatever, and it uh, sleep is in there too. And But the good thing is it does not last forever either 16 or 26 months, but the degree lasts forever. And do the financial options work for you? And you really don't know that till you apply and speak to financial aid. And they're, well, they're very user-friendly and they'll work out the best they can. But if you, can you commit to completing the program? Which means if you're gonna start, are you gonna finish? It's a big commitment. But again, it does not last forever. And then the, um, of course, that's me. But these are the skills learned. Listening. Uh, you know, facilitating, working alongside uh, professionals, uh, you know, wellness and life coaching. And refer, you know, if someone has a real bad problem, you want to refer them to a, uh, you know, a professional. And then. It will help you with building trust with folks, gathering data to deepening understanding. And one thing about the uh, being a, a psychology major and graduate is you don't have all the right answers. However, you can ask all the right questions. And when you ask the right questions, most people, they'll figure it out themselves. They just needed your input on that to guide them that way. And uh, again, here are our concentrations, marriage and family, leadership, self-design, human services, and pre-PhD. Then, uh, but anyway, it's uh, for more information, I mean, I'll reach out to everyone, at least by email over the next day or so. And, uh, you know, we give over two, $2 million a year in scholarships. That's, that's, that's a lot of money. And, and a, a good part of that is we just, you know, we absorb it. I mean, we get funds from, uh, you know, donations and that, but, uh, and then we do have a $55 application fee that can be waived. So any questions? <clears throat> questions were just absolutely fabulous. I mean, you know, you have interested people who are very, very interested in improving their life when you get that many questions. And I will say this, that, it's the first time since I was a master's in psychology representative like Joe that I've coined a joined in as career services, but, you know, an, an alumni. But what's exciting is I usually put a student on the webinar when they graduate. And um, it's very fun to see where someone started and then where they finished. And, you know, I think one of my favorite stories, and we'll, we'll get you all off of here and onto your evening was a gal in Texas. We have a lot of students in Texas. And she had uh, just about to start, gone through orientation and everything. She lost a child. And she called me and she says, I just don't think I can do this. I, I My brain is hurting. I'm so sad. And I, I prayed with her and I said, you know, Alma, I have to tell you that you're going to learn some skills in this course. They're going to help you with life. And I want you to do what you want to do. We're not for everyone. I want you to be ready. Well, she went ahead and started. And about, I want to say, three courses into the program, she called me up one night. She says, Mrs. Trennan, I just have to tell you, I'm pregnant again. And the day that I met her at graduation, I just thought my heart would fall out on the floor. But we have so many stories like that because we're not just the science of psychology we're all about flourishing people and people who are using all their skills that God gives them to change the world. So if that's what you're looking for, they're the right place. And one of these questions are so wonderful. Okay, what is the GPA requirements to enter the master's program? Is there a way to provide other metrics for admission? A lot have changed since I graduated in 2005. So yes, we are hearing from people sometimes who go, yeah, you know, I was a party animal. I was taking my bachelor's. And so sometimes if, if a bachelor's is a little low, Dr. Julia, who was a wonderful woman, the mother of four children, 
She looks at your letters of recommendation. She looks at your coursework that you took. She looks at your personal statement that you write to get accepted, Matthew. And from that moment, if you're a little shy of the GPA, sometimes we will accept people. And all she says is that first eight weeks, you have to maintain that 3.0 average. And I think that's very fair. And we have had people that just absolutely were outstanding graduates because this time they didn't want to mess around. They wanted to really do well in their master's. I hope that answers your question. I got one from Chris. Okay, good. Um, anything else you want to answer, uh, Mrs. Drennan? I think we've got them all. I, I'm amazed, you know, some, thank you, Matthew. That's very right. And, and we are fair. And, and I think sometimes that life goes in peaks and valleys. And sometimes you just say, you know what, it's time. I've been thinking about this for a zillion years and I need to move forward. And we'd love to move forward with you. Yeah, I'm going to end it with this. And you know, I, I mean, this is what I, I read, but you know, what is job security? You know, job security. And you know, how do I have job security? Well, a lot of it comes from confidence that you can do the job. And when you get into a program like this, I mean, you, you learn skills that that'll just, I'm not gonna say they're superpowers, but they're pretty close to it. And you know, knowing, you know, how, you know, what questions to ask. And just let people, you know, let people decide on their own. And, you know, it, it changes you too. You know, anytime you get this different base of knowledge, it will change you for the better, of course. So, okay. Thank you, everybody. I appreciate your attention. And uh, anyway, I'll reach out to everyone and you all have a great night. Thanks, everyone. It was a pleasure to... Uh meet you on the webinar. And Brandon, I'll get with uh, Dr. Klausling at that answer for you, okay? Everyone have a beautiful evening. Thank you.